Since I made the last video of the complete sauna build, I mentioned in that video that I would change a few things, and a few people reached out to me and said that I should put together a video kind of listing out what I would change and kind of show, show what I would do different if I were to do it again. The first thing I would do different is I would definitely get a smaller sized wood stove to put in here. The wood stove I have in here now is just massive. It's more made for like a large cabin or something that it would heat a large space. This 8x8 sauna is 64 square feet and it's just kind of overkill right now. I can kind of keep the temperature in here at a reasonable temperature by just building a smaller fire, but it does take up a lot of space and in an eight by eight sauna, you really don't have much room to begin with. So having a smaller stove would definitely help kind of make the space a little more open and give a little more room in here. The other thing with it being such a big stove is I really tried to keep it away from the walls as much as possible, just because I knew it was gonna get super hot. So that kind of, into the space a little bit too so with a, a smaller sauna I would have that heat shield there still but I would be able to kind of tuck it back into the corner a bit more this thing's probably two to three feet wide and it really to in order to keep it away from the walls I really needed to push it out into the center of the sauna more than what I would have to do with a smaller stove also Having a smaller stove, obviously it would have been a lot easier to move in here. My friends needed to pick it up, lift it into the truck, then they drove it all the way here. And once it got here, it's kind of up on a little hill where the sauna's built. And we needed like six people to lift that thing into place. And it was just a pain all around. I definitely would go with a smaller stove next time. Another thing I would do different is I would not timber frame the floor. I think being at my first timber frame build it really helped me out because it gave me more practice in the trade but if I were to do it again a lot of the complications of the design work and kind of cutting all the timbers and the joinery came from those floor joists and you really don't you don't see them and once the the sauna is completed anyway so it was kind of not useless work because I got a lot of practice out of it, but you can't see it. There's really nothing to show for with timber framing the floor. The next two things that I would change kind of tie together. So the first one would be, I'd probably go with a 10 by 10 sauna. I know that kind of seems like overkill for a sauna, but it really doesn't take too much to heat the space because that wood stove gets so hot. So I would go 10 by 10 sauna and to tie into that, that would have helped me solve my other issue is the benches. So with the benches, they're kind of at an awkward height. Um, they're, they're high enough off the ground so that you get the warmth of the sauna, but they're too high to the point where your feet don't touch the ground and if you've been in a traditional sauna, they usually have like the two tiered benches. And so I was really hoping to do a two tiered bench system in here, but just the space wasn't permitting. So another thing that I would change, but I wouldn't say I, I'm disappointed that I did it because I'm happy with how it's come out so far, but I would definitely buy a door and frame it in. I think where I lose a lot of heat is kind of the seal of the door where that I built it doesn't really seal well it turned out all right but definitely would go with a a store bought door for that I mean the price maybe a hundred bucks it, it wouldn't be too too bad I did build this one for really cheap it it really didn't cost me much because I had the wood anyway and the siding and the insulation I had to buy all that anyway for the sauna build but I think kind of efficiency wise, it would be much better with a store-bought door. And the other thing with that too, is I would have been able to buy a door with a window and it would have been nice to look out to the lake because I, I have a really nice view looking right out to the lake from the front of the sauna. And I did try to build a window into the door 
using an old window that I picked up on the side of the road and did not turn out well. I tried to score that glass and kind of frame it into the door and it, it didn't work at all. So <laughs> I would definitely probably go with a store-bought door with a window in it instead of trying to build your own. Another thing I would do different too is the exterior siding. I'm happy with the board and batten finish, but how I did it was I bought eight one by 12s for each side of the sauna and doing all the planning ahead of time, I should have figured this out, but basically from post to post, outside post to outside post is eight feet. But once you put the two inches of strapping for the insulation, it expands it out four inches. So basically the exterior of it with the strapping and the insulation is eight feet, four inches. Cause you have two inches on the right side, two inches on the left side that kind of juts out. So when I went to go put on the one by 12 exterior siding, I had to leave just a slight gap in between each of the one by 12 uh, boards. And then I put the battens over it to cover that gap. I would have preferred to butt them up right next to each other. Um, I don't know necessarily, I haven't really thought through how I would have done that differently. Maybe just get slightly wider boards because I all, I had them all custom, custom milled, but definitely something that I would keep in mind the next time because I didn't like having that gap in between, although it was covered by the batten, I still would prefer not to have that gap. So this one I'm going to have to take some shots of and kind of walk you through it, but basically the next thing that I would, I would change or I would, I should have planned for is with my roof joists, I didn't account for where they jutted out in order to, to support the roof rafters. And basically it didn't allow me on one side to screw the board and or the tongue and groove pine to. So I know that doesn't really make sense, but I'll, I'll walk you through it. So here's what I was talking about with the notching out of the roof joist. So basically this beam right here is what I call the roof joist and these are going to be the roof rafters. And so what I did here was I wrapped the whole timber frame in this tongue and groove pine, which you see here. And this roof joist, you can't see it now, obviously, but it goes and sticks out about a foot past the outside because there's another roof rafter that bears on this and kind of creates that overhang for the roof. So basically what happened is while putting up this tongue and groove pine, I had a place to screw it into on the outside of that six by six post. But over here, this board, for example, was running right into the here. And then I didn't have anywhere else to screw it into because there wasn't the outside face of the six by six post. So what I had to do was kind of notch out a little channel right through here. And I did not do a great job of doing that, which if I were to plan for it ahead of time, I would have just used like the chain mortiser or my chisel and a, a circular saw, but I had it all assembled together. And to use the circular saw, I would have been running into this roof rafter. So in hindsight, I would have just taken a notched out a three quarter inch thick channel running right down here, kind of parallel with the outside face of this timber. And then the tongue and groove would have fit right into that. And then it would have had a bearing surface right in there. But what I ended up doing was I assembled all the tongue and groove pine up to this point and then just kind of took a drill bit, a three quarter inch drill bit. And I don't know why at the time I didn't realize that it would have been seen on the inside, but I wish I would have done it a little cleaner. This side came out pretty well, actually. I kind of got a nice straight vertical cut and you can't see it, but it's a three quarter inch wide channel that runs right up through there. 
and it allows those tongue and groove pine boards to bear on something on on this side as opposed to just running right into that roof joist and stopping and not having anything to screw into. This is a, a big one that I would definitely change. Um, I don't know why looking back on it, if I was just in a hurry or if I didn't have the, wasn't able to get the tools immediately, but I should have sanded or planed down the timbers before I put them up and framed them up. So I basically built the sauna and then went back and sanded all the timbers once everything was already enclosed and it was it was terrible, especially doing those roof rafters, looking right up at it and the, the sawdust just coming right down into your face and your eyes. So definitely would plane or sand down the timbers ahead of time. It would have made my life 10 times easier. The last thing I would have done different is I would have cut the hole for the wood stove exhaust pipe kind of in phases as I built the sauna. So what I did was basically I built the whole roof and then tried to cut through all the layers in the roof to get through it for the hole for the exhaust pipe. But looking back on it, it was just a pain to do that. I should have installed the tongue and groove pine, cut the hole out of that, then laid my next layer of I should have put my insulation over that and then cut my hole out of that. And then um, my plywood should have cut my hole out of that, then metal roofing on top of that, and then cut my hole out of that and kind of done it layer by layer instead of trying to do it all at once. It probably took me two to three hours just to cut that hole out. And I was in the sauna looking up at it, kind of like the sanding. It was just all falling right into my face and into my eyes. So... It would have been much easier if I would have just been able to get on the roof with the tongue and groove pine, cut that hole out, next layer, cut the hole out, next layer. So I could have just done it one by one, but hindsight's twenty twenty.